This is the third video in our series on transformations. In this case we're going to talk about the last set which is reflection and absolute value transformations. So that will appear in our shift chart in this area right here. So we're going to talk about our reflections first right here and here and then our absolute value transformations right here. I have updated the shift chart to be more specific here on the absolute value. I think that will help you. Uh, first of all, we'll talk about a reflection. So when we are talking about uh, a negative sign being in the parentheses with X, we will reflect over the Y axis as we see here. When we are talking about a negative sign for essentially the whole function or uh, outside the parentheses with X we will be reflecting over the X axis so let's look at those first we're going to use a line this time because I think that will do a better job because the um, quadratic parent function really um, you're just not going to be able to see all the transformations we could see one but not both Okay, so we're going to use a line which will make it better here. So instead of a parent function, our parent function of the line x plus 1, of course, is y equals x. But we are going to start with the line x plus 1 so we can view these transformations a little better. Uh, we need to we'll keep the same um, colors here that we've been using in the other videos so that we can see the differences. So I'll go ahead and box these in real quick and then we'll get started here. So similar to what we've been doing, we've got uh, a graph here obviously. We've got a table uh, for each case. So we've got our starting line which is x plus 1 and then the negative x uh, will be the pink right here with the the negative x in parentheses which is a reflection over the y-axis and then this bottom one is negative for the whole function or the whole part uh, where x is. So uh, we'll look at those differences. So let's get our parent function graph first. So we've got the point negative 3, negative 2. This of course is simply a line with a positive 1 slope with a y-intercept of 1. And of course we have when x is 0, y is 1. Put one more on here, 3, comma 4. Just to try to, you know, my artistic skills aren't always the best here, so do my best to fit a line in there. Oh, wow, that was actually pretty good for me. All right, so there's our parent function line. So let's talk about what the reflection over the y-axis. So imagine we are going to take this line, we are going to pin this line right here at the y-axis and then we are going to flip it, reflect it over the y-axis. So we are basically going to have a shape that's like this. So this section right here is going to flip over the y-axis this way. So we're going to have our line up here and then this green part is going to flip over the y-axis this way which will then put it down in this area. Okay, so let's get rid of that arrow so that we can draw this. So we, we've got y in y1 down here, we've got uh, the point negative 3, comma 4. So we'll start there, negative 3, comma 4. And we've got the point 0, comma 1. So we still have a y-intercept of 1. And then we'll go 3, negative 2 down here, 3, negative 2. All right, so let's see if we can fit this line in there. Not as good as the other one, but you get the idea. So this is continuing on like this. Okay, so essentially what we have done, we have reflected this whole thing over the y-axis. So notice that this portion of our original line has been reflected over the y-axis this way. So it was in quadrant 1, now it's in quadrant 2. This part of our line down here that was in quadrant 3 is now reflected over and in quadrant 4. So you can see uh, what's going on with that specific line. Uh, as far as patterns in the data, 
you will see uh, how this is uh, symmetrical about the y-axis of course like we've talked about so here we have the point three comma four three comma four over here we're going to have the opposite x sign of negative three four so our x's essentially are switching signs so we we're in, just like when we did geometric transformations we reflect over the y-axis our y values stay the same and our x values change sign so we can say that uh, in this case our x values x values change symbol for change is a triangle change sign and that makes perfect sense because I, I put this in as negative x plus 1, but that's the same thing as ne negative x plus 1 this way. So notice our uh, x's are just changing sign here. That, that's what's going on. All right, now the next version will be a reflection over the x-axis. So this is our orange graph here. Notice the way we've written this, negative for the whole thing. So negative and then in negative the quantity x plus 1 so negative and then x plus 1 in parentheses when we distribute essentially we're distributing this negative sign inside this parentheses that becomes negative x and then we distribute the negative to the positive 1 also so it becomes a negative 1 so we re can rewrite that negative parentheses x plus 1 is the same thing as negative x minus 1 so you will notice our original line had a positive slope and a positive 1 y-intercept now we have a negative slope and a negative 1 y-intercept so we've got our table values over here so let's do uh, negative 3 comma 2 will be a point on our graph now negative 3 comma 2 right there and then let's do 3 negative 4 3 negative 4 down here and then our y-intercept is at 0 negative 1 0 negative 1 so let's try to draw that in here you'll notice couple things about this graph okay so what we have done here again we have re reflected this over the x-axis so view it this way here is our critical point for this reflection I'll do this in blue right here everything is going on about this point so you'll notice our original green line the quadrant 3 of our green line is now reflected over the x-axis and appears in quadrant 2 now so we have taken this section of our original equation our original graph I should say reflected it over the x-axis right and the key point when you're reflecting over the x-axis is where the graph crosses the x-axis so that is where we can see this symmetry where we're symmetrical now about the x-axis so the next uh, part of the graph was our part in quadrant 1 and 2 here so the part above the x-axis has now been reflected in the negative direction so as far as any patterns in the data we can look here and just like our geometric transformations when we reflect over the x-axis our y values change sign so this one we let me do it in orange so we keep it straight our x's when we reflect over the x-axis our x coordinates notice here here are staying the same so x's stay the same but our y values y values change sign okay so that's the pattern in the data so that is reflections now let's go to absolute value let's look at our chart real quick so an absolute value we we notice that when we take the absolute value of the whole function quadrants three and four are over the x-axis and quadrants one and two remain the same this is from our shift chart then if we take absolute value of x only we are now symmetrical about the y-axis which means quadrants one and four are over the y-axis and quadrants two and three are removed so this will make more sense when we look at this we are again going to start with the line x plus one so let's get that graphed quickly okay now for 
an absolute value. So I've gone ahead and graphed our parent function. I paused the video and got our parent function in there. Or not our parent function, but our starting function, I should say, so that we can move forward here. So our, the absolute value of our entire function is what we're going to do first. So we've got the absolute value of the whole thing. And we're going to review the effects of that. Up in our chart, that would be this section right here. So we are now looking at this one. So we are going to reflect all negative y's over the x-axis. That means that quadrants 3 and 4 are over the x-axis and quadrants 1 and 2 remain the same. So let's see how that affects our graph. Okay, so let we need to graph several points here. We've got negative 3, 2. We've got negative 2, 1. We've got negative 1 and 0. We've got 0, 1. We've got 2, 3. Notice we're now on top of our graph. Okay, so I'm, I'm going to stop with the points there. Notice that we no longer have a line, obviously. We have an absolute value function, which is the v-shaped graph if you recall so we're going to go over the top of our graph right here so I'm not going to go all the way so that up here so that we still know that our parent function was there and then we'll come up like this you notice here's what's going on we said in our notes that when we have the absolute value of the whole function that we are going to reflect all the negative y's, so that would be this down here, over the x-axis. And more specifically, quadrants 3 and 4, so that would be 3 and 4, will be reflected over the x-axis, so that's what's occurred here. And quadrants 1 and 2, so that would be 1 and 2, stay the same. And that's exactly what we have going on. This portion of the graph right here is staying the same. Okay, because that's in quadrants 1 and 2. This part of the graph is reflected over the x-axis from our original, just like our notes told us. And if you notice, back in our uh, horizontal shifts, we have x plus 1 in with x, so we are doing a horizontal shift, and we are going opposite of the sign, and we are going left 1 from our absolute value parent function, which would normally be a V shape with the bottom of the V being at the origin. Now the bottom of the V is at the negative one. So we've got a couple of comparisons going on here with this situation. All right, I'm going to get rid of those brackets so that we can graph our absolute uh, value of X only now. So let's look at our graph here. I just marked on the graph a little bit, get that off there. So let's look at some points. We've got negative 3, 4, negative 3, 4, right here. We've got negative 2, 3, negative 2 and 3. We've got negative 1 and 0, negative, I'm sorry, negative 1 and 2. We've got 0 and 1. 0 and 1 right here. We've got 1 and 2. We've got 2 and 3. Now we're on top of our graph again and we've got 3 and 4. 3 and 4. So I'm going to just draw this part up to here and stop so that we know that our from here up from this point right here and up our graph is matching the pink and the green. All right, and then the rest of our graph is going to go back this way, just like this. So we have another V-shaped graph. And what has happened here, per our rules, we are symmetrical about the Y-axis with our original graph. And more specifically, quadrants 1 and 4. So 1 and 4, these two quadrants, let me label the quadrants. 1, 2, 3, and 4, so we keep those straight. So now quadrants 1 and 4 per our shift chart are reflected over the y-axis, and that's exactly what we've done. This part of the graph right here is reflected over 
the y-axis right here. Then the other part is quadrants 2 and 3 of our graph, which is here and here, are removed. And you notice this, green, this part of the green line from here down is not in our graph anymore. It's only what was in quadrant 1 and 4. In this case, we just had graph in quadrant 1. We would reflect that over the y-axis, and then quadrants 2 and 3 are actually removed. Okay, so and you notice we have a vertical transformation of the parent function, the absolute value parent function also occurring here. This is how these uh, different transformations sometimes come together. And in this case, we have the absolute value of x plus 1. And like we talked about in our vertical transformations, when you have the plus 1 outside of x, away from x, you're going to have a vertical shift with the sign. And that's exactly what we've got. So let's, in another color here, Let's put in our parent function that would be, I'm going to back up and get these uh, braces out of there so we can, uh, so that we can see this parent function. So let's just put, just for fun, our absolute value parent function in. And you'll notice that while we've been talking about absolute value transformations, we've also got vertical and horizontal transformations going on of our absolute value parent function. So here uh, in the pink we essentially are going opposite of the sign so we're moving left one with our parent function of absolute value and in the orange we are going vertical so we're moving all our points up one so that's a vertical transformation of our absolute value parent function. So along with absolute value these uh, two concepts come together. Alright so that will be the last video in our shift and stretch, compression and reflection in symmetrical series.